Okay, everybody, it looks like, uh, again, I'm apologizing on behalf of Vivian. She's experiencing technical difficulties, so she should be here um, in about, what, two or three minutes. So I wanted to welcome everybody to the call. Uh, before we go ahead and officially get started, I just wanted to poll everybody out there in the audience on what they would like to see out of this presentation. I know a lot of people, when I was talking to them offline, um, they didn't know that there was actually a difference between emotions and feelings. So I kind of wanted to get your input on that as well as some other things that you guys wanted to make sure that we covered uh, this evening. So I'm going to take notes. So fire away. Hi, April. It's Sandra. Hey, Sandra. Hi. Live from New York. Hey, <laughs> welcome. Oh, I'm so excited for this. Um, I was, I'm super thrilled and I would just like, you know, for you to touch on how do emotions really impact our health? Like, mm -hmm. like is that, is that real? Like, is that, is there like science behind that? Is that an actual thing? So Perfect. That's a good question. I'm going to write that down and make sure we cover that tonight. And we are. That is in my presentation. Anybody else? Hi, this is Angela. I hi, work, Angela. Hi, I um, work with Vivian. Um, and I'm new to this group. But I'm oh. interested to find out how emotions play a role in our weight. Oh, yes, yes. A lot. <laughs> I'm not just talking about physically, like a lot of weight, but it does a lot, <laughs> like yes. physically in our entire bodies. Okay, so that was a question from Sandra and Angela. Anybody else? Well, I have another one. It's Sandra again. Okay. <laughs> Nobody else is jumping in. Sorry, I've been dying for this presentation. I've been waiting for this. And Thank I have you. another one, which is, do our emotions as adults affect our children? Like, can they really read that? Mm -hmm. Or can we, you know, like, can they really feel, can they, can they go beyond like our fake smiles or when we're trying to pretend like everything's okay? Right. Do How children pick attacked. up on that? Yeah, absolutely. It's our environment because everything is um, energy. And we'll talk about that on, you know, everything in our environment has energy. I mean, this chair that, I'm sitting on has energy, um, the floor, the carpet, you know, of course, live beings, like you said, are, are kids. Um, absolutely. Very good questions. And we haven't even got started yet. Maybe we should just get started without Vivian. She'll just have to listen to the replay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. She said, go ahead and start. Go ahead. Okay. She'll just have to jump in here and, and chime in. So I'll go ahead and introduce myself. My name is April Joy Ford. I write, speak, and teach. I am a trauma expert. Uh, before I basically dove full into this industry of helping people, I was actually an engineer at Intel, um, electrical engineering degree. That was my technical background and degree, but life situations and circumstances had pulled me in the direction of helping other people. Um, again, I write, speak, and teach. I've written a few best-selling books. I speak in the media, and I also coach and train not only individuals as a life coach, but organizations such as corporations, um, organizations, nonprofits when it comes to wellness in a workplace or trauma informed care. And this is one of my personal favorite um, topics when it comes to emotional trauma. I am a survivor of childhood sexual abuse. I dealt with that since the very young age of nine years old from my stepfather. I actually gave birth to his um, child. I was pregnant at the age of 16 and I gave that baby up for adoption. So a lot of trauma in my life, physical, mental, emotional, <laughs> sexual, and I was able to at least turn my life around to graduate out of college with a triple E degree, worked for a top, um, the top semiconductor company, that's Intel Corporation. I spent a good majority <laughs> of my career there for about 13, 14 years up until about 2013 when I fully, um, you know, started writing, speaking, and teaching because it was um, 2010 
when I had one of those life moments where I had to start really asking questions in life on, okay, what really matters in life? I, I was working a high paying job. I had the houses, had the cars, traveled all over the world, but still yet I was having this conversation with life, not only because I was looking for that fulfillment and happiness and true joy in life, but because I uh, became a widow at the age of 32 and going through the struggles of grief and becoming a single parent, I had to make a choice in my own well-being and wellness plan when I recognized that shortly after I lost my husband, I think it was about 60, 60 days later, I, I ended up in the urgent care for a simple um, checkup because I had a pop vein in my wrist. But immediately as I was waiting my turn in, lob in the lobby, I, I started having a panic attack. Um, I was sweating, I was about to faint, and they rushed me into the back room to do an EKG to make sure I wasn't having a heart attack. Um, so throughout that series, um, I walked away from my doctor's office with prescription after prescription after prescription from dealing with my insomnia, my stress, my anxiety, my depression, um, you name it. And I'm not saying that I'm totally against medication. I'm just saying that it shouldn't be the first and only option and long-term solution to our wellness plan. Because as I looked at all the medications that they were prescribing me, I looked at the prescriptions that my husband was taking and he was considered by the doctors young, fit and healthy. And yet he still uh, passed away at a very young age. So I made a decision at that point to seek other integrative holistic alternatives and this is how I discovered um, using essential oils and what we're going to talk about tonight on managing our emotions our traumas and which essential oils um, to use to get through that so that's my quick um, short story in a nutshell and I you know don't feel as if you know if you can't relate to my story as being a survivor of childhood sexual abuse or going through widowhood or being a single parent don't feel like trauma has to be so extreme that like oh my god I can't relate to her story I don't know what she's talking about because in reality every single person that's listening right now and listening to the replay of this I guarantee you that at some point in your life or probably presently you're going through some form or shape of trauma again it doesn't have to be um, you know, extreme situations um, compared to to mine. So this is just a picture of some of my work, my books, and this is the training program, Break Through the Barriers. That's actually state approved by the California Department of Social Services. And yes, um, aromatherapy, emotional aromatherapy is part of that curriculum. And these are my two kids, Anaya and Ellen. So what we're going to go over tonight are five uh, simple things. First is how do emotions take part in our being? Uh, do you know how you really feel? Uh, the third is where did those feelings come from? And number four, who's controlling who? The feeler controlling the feeling or is it the feeling controlling the feeler. And the fifth is how you can get empowered with those emotions. So I want you guys to just write down right now, just do a self check on what am I feeling at this present moment? There's no right or wrong answer. You know, everybody's different. Maybe you just came off work or going through traffic or out of a meeting like, like Vivian, just write down, you know, in one word or maybe two words, what you're feeling. And while you guys are doing that, I'm going to try to make sure everybody's muted so we don't get any background noise. I did that. Oh, thank you, Vivian. <laughs> So how do emotions take part in our being? Um, there is a difference between emotions and 
feelings, although, you know, in everyday language, we tend to use those same words interchangeably, but they are different, but on you know, the same side of the coin. So think of emotions as like indicators in your body. And feelings are more of your own perceptions and inter interpretations in your mind. The best example that I can try to relate to you on what this really means is um, if it's like a cold winter day, it's raining outside or if it's snowy and you have the fireplace on, you walk up to the fireplace and, you know, before you get closer to the fireplace, you know, maybe you're shivering, you're kind of cold, you've got goosebumps. And as you approach the fireplace, your body senses that temperature change of warmth and, you know, what the environment is. But it's your mind that's really trying to figure out, oh, okay, what is this temperature change? Is it warm? Is it cozy? Is it comforting? Or is it something I should be fearful of, of, you know, is there fire danger? Should I be scared or fearful? So those are feelings um, in your mind that it's tied those tags to those emotions. And we'll get a little bit more into that, but I just wanted to um, give you guys a little bit of preface on there is a difference and a distinction between emotions and feelings. So emotions, again, think of as indicators in your body. It's emotion, meaning there, it's energy in motion. If you look up the dictionary definition, it's a conscious mental reaction, which is a state of feeling. And emotions are important because it is part of our being. And when we look at this as a holistic model, meaning our minds, body, souls, and emotions, holistic really means to bring everything together as whole. I know a lot of people think holistic is just, oh, is that Eastern medicine versus Western medicine? Yes, that's also a terminology and a definition. But when we're speaking as far as our um, physical and emotional and spiritual beings, this is what it means to be whole as um, an entire being. And really, when you have things in alignment, when you have your mind, body, soul, and emotions in alignment, this is when you begin to operate at your best and optimal performance. Now, when we talk about optimal and, and alignment, this does not mean perfection. Just wanted to put that out there. And trauma, just basic definition of trauma is basically anything that is deeply distressing or a disturbing experience. Again, it doesn't have to be so extreme um, compared to my story, um, you know, abuse or um, a loss. So do you know how you really feel and where did those feelings um, come from? Where did they originate? So if we look at our brains, um, this is a very simplified version of our complex brain. The limbic part of our brain controls our emotions and our feelings. And I created this model here, the PBDA, and P stands for perceptions. B is for beliefs. D is your decisions. And A is your actions. So if you work yourself backwards here, before you look at an action that you take, it all originated with an original thought and our thought becomes you know, our perception of that situation, of that circumstance or whatever that is happening to us. And we form our beliefs based on our thoughts, based on our perceptions. And with our beliefs, we form our decisions. So what do we do with the decision? We act on our um, decision. And I wanted to share this story with you on um, an analogy that I was sharing once when I was being interviewed in the media. Uh, two people go into an amusement park, you know, whether you are love going on roller coaster rides or maybe you're the person, the other person, person B, you're terrified of going on, you know, scary roller coasters you know you're so so terrified you wouldn't even jump on it you'll just 
you know, stand in line and wait for your family or friends to get off. So if you look at the two different people, again, person A is a person that loves the amusement parks and going on the rides. Person B is the one that's terrified. If you look at their body and how they're responding to the actual experience, it's going to be the exact same. Their heart rate is beating fast. Maybe their palms are sweaty because one person is excited versus the other person being um, terrified. Maybe um, they're sweating a little bit in their temples. Whatever it is, their physiological responses are going to be the same. Now, I want you guys to ask, okay, what's the difference? If their physical responses are the same, why is it that one person is so ecstatic and so excited to be on this ride and the other person is frantically freaking out? And it goes to the feeling that they've tied to that particular emotion and experience. So if you look at this model, their perceptions and their beliefs are different. And that's all, that's really the only difference between the two people is how they perceive and how they've attached those personal beliefs to that particular experience that causes them to feel either excited that they're going to go on this, this ride, or they're going to be terrified that they're going to go on this same, very exact same ride. If you guys have any questions, you can raise your hand or if I'm going a little bit too fast, um, I can slow down. So if we look here at the emotional guidance scale with joy, knowledge, empowerment, freedom, love, and appreciation being the highest, and as you can see, the spiral, you're either spiraling up at the highest um, emotional uh, frequencies or you're spiraling downwards. Passion, enthusiasm, positive expectation, belief, those are so positive, optimism, hopefulness, um, contentment. And then you get to see the downward spiral. That's boredom, pessimism, frustration, overwhelm, disappointment, doubt, worry, blame, discouragement, anger, revenge, hatred, jealousy, insecurity, uh, fear, grief, depression, um, and victim, uh, victimhood uh, mentality and thinking. So I want you guys to try to think at the beginning of the call when I gave you guys a few minutes to think about how do you feel? What was that word or two words that you describe? Where would it fit on this emotional guidance scale? And we're just bringing awareness here of, okay, where did I, I mean, where was I at the beginning of the call? Was I really enthusiastic and excited to be on this call? Or was I um, anger, angry because I just got out of gridlock traffic? You know, and this is mostly good to really do a checkpoint, uh, doing a reality check on where you are on this scale. So I'll leave this on here so you guys can make a note of that. And this is one of my favorite movies. This is a free endorsement. I don't get paid to endorse this movie inside <laughs> out. Uh, for the or five of the characteristics that they show is fear, anger, joy, disgust, sadness. Mm -hmm. And I like this movie. It's not just an animation for kids, but grownups should also go, go see it because it goes into the details of our emotions and our beliefs, our thought process, and how that all plays uh, together. And really recognizing that each emotion is really valid. There's a time and place where sadness is appropriate and joy is appropriate or fear is appropriate. Um, so make sure you guys go see that. And again, this is a free endorsement of the movie. <laughs> so April, are you going to discuss the uh, upward and downward spiral? Like how people can actually, did they cut, well, figure out what their pattern is and interrupt the pattern if they know they're always going towards the downward spiral? Like how do you help them with that? Yeah, I'm going to touch a little bit on that when we go through the, um, the essential oils. Okay. And okay. when I work with organizations and clients, mm -hmm. we do that because I feel like um, when people are on a large forum like this, they, they typically don't like to outwardly admit Correct. Uh, what their patterns are. And that's understandable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, some of us are a little bit shy. Mm -hmm. um, another model here uh, is the 
paraplegic wheel. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but it goes over, it almost looks like the color wheel, you know, the primary colors of the color wheel that goes through the fundamental basics mm -hmm. of our emotions of joy, trust, fear, surprise, sadness, disgust, anger, anticipation. And the way this is created as this little subgraph here, if you have anticipation plus joy, that equals optimism as represented here by the color wheel. Mm -hmm. and the opposite of that is disapproval. If you look across the color wheel, mm, okay. anger is the opposite of fear. Disgust is the opposite of trust. Um, if you add, you know, another one would be anger. Anticipation is aggressiveness. And the opposite of that is awe. So again, these are just good indicators and checkpoints to see where are we fitting our emotions and feelings? Because I'm finding that a lot of people can't express mm -hmm. their feelings and emotions. And this is a good starting point to see, okay, what is it that I'm really feeling at this particular moment? Mm. That's cool. And then you can figure out where um, your triggers are. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about who is uh, controlling who. I remember having a conversation with somebody and they were on a weight loss program. So every day they would jump on the scale in the morning and whatever the number was for the day, uh, basically determine how they would perceive and react and behave throughout the day. If it was a good number on the scale, they were happy and motivated and encouraged. If it was a bad number on scale, you wouldn't want to be in the same room as them. They, they were just frantic. They were angry because they did all this work, yet the scale in their bathroom um, was so powerful that it controlled their emotions. And I made a comment. I said, so basically you're a slave to your scale. You know, I didn't mean it to be in a derogatory or, um, you know, a wrongful, hurtful way, but it kind of felt like the scale had so much power over this person's day on how they would perceive their day mm -hmm. that it controlled the entire day of how they would act going to work, how they act with their family um, when they got back to work. So I'm going to give you guys a few questions here, a few questions for you guys to do a little bit of self-check and try to answer these as you know, honestly as possible. You can just write the notes down. You don't have to say it out loud. If you logged into your bank account one morning and you noticed that it was a negative balance, how would you feel? How would that emotion play out the rest of your day? If someone cuts you off on the road, how would you feel? How would that emotion play out the rest of your day? Number three, if you just won the lottery, how would you feel? How would that emotion play out the rest of the day? So again, these are just indicators to do a self check on how am I letting my emotions either control me or am I even aware of what I'm feeling and what I'm sensing? Or are you going to be like that person when I made that comment of, or well, are you a slave to your scale? No, we as a feeler, our, our physical bodies are the feelers. Mm -hmm. um, we're feeling the feeling and the motion, but who is really controlling who? The feeler controlling the feeling or is it your feeling that's controlling you? Like that person that basically controlled um, their entire day, whether they got a good number or a bad number on the scale. So this is how you can get empowered. We're gonna talk about empowerment. One of the tools, one essential tools is, um, is essential oils and I recognize that some people are fairly new to essential oils so I'm just going to go over maybe one or two minutes on the basics of what essential oils are 
where they come from and how to use it properly and safely. And then we'll dive into the emotional aspect. So basically essential oils are nature's defense mechanism to environmental threats. They're natural aromatic aromatic compounds that come from, you know, if you look up, look out in nature from seeds, from trees to barks, to stems, to flowers, and it's highly concentrated because of its potency. It's about 50 to 70 times more powerful than herbs, which makes them not only effective because of their potency, but it's also effective because it's able to penetrate through our cell membranes and since we're talking about emotions today we talked about a little bit on the limbic part of our system in our brain that controls the emotions and our feelings the essential oil is actually able to penetrate through the blood brain barrier so the three simple ways and safe ways you can use essential oil is aromatically you can just um you know open the bottle and just inhale it out of the bottle or you can diffuse it. I have my diffuser in the background. You can put it on your skin topically and you can also um, take it internally through food, water, or just um, under your tongue. So that's just a very quick basic on what essential oils are and how to safely use it. So this is one of my favorite um, products with doTERRA, the Emotional Aromatherapy Kit. It comes with six oils. As you can see, centered on the screen, kind of looks familiar with the um, emotional color uh, wheels that we went over. It has Motivate, which is the encouraging blend. Cheer is the uplifting blend. Passion, the inspiring blend. Forgive, the renewing blend console the comforting blend and peace the reassuring blend so again when we are able to recognize the type of emotions and feelings we're having we can self identify what we're feeling so if you're feeling grief and sadness you know maybe your your body's calling more for the comforting blend if you're needing um you know maybe some encouragement that would be the motivate blend if you're feeling a little bit bored, um, maybe some inspiration with the passion blend would do you some good. If you're feeling angry or bitter towards someone or something, the renewing blend would do some good, which is the forgiving blend. So what I have found is that emotional aromatherapy actually has some science um, behind it. That's why it's super powerful and very effective. When we are diffusing the natural aromatic compounds, such as the diffuser, the receptors in our noses, which is we have tons and tons of receptors in our nose, actually triggers the olfactory system in our brain, which is connected to the limbic. And we talked about the limbic part of our brain that controls our emotions, our moods, and our feelings. It's actually triggering that part of our brain to help us control and manage those emotions and feelings. So essentially, the essential oils is basically the carrier to connect all of our minds, body, souls, and emotions. When we talked about having everything in a holistic um, alignment. Does anybody have questions on, on this? Nope. Nope. Okay. So when we talk about um, emotional aromatherapy, take for example, uh, Joy. Remember Joy, of course I'm going to be biased to it because it is my middle name, mm -hmm. uh, but it is one of the highest um, emotions on the emotional spiral that we talked about. So to an experience a feeling like that, typically the ingredients would be um, when I speak of ingredients, it's like cooking. Uh, grapefruit, peppermint, and elong elong. I know a lot of people pronounce it ylang ylang, but it's elong elong. Um, so this is like cooking. You know, when you're cooking or baking, there's recipes and ingredients, and those ingredients are in the recipe. So I'm going to read you guys, again, to experience joy. Typically, the oils would be grapefruit, 
Elong Elong and Peppermint. And I'm just going to read quickly from this resource guide, the emotions and essential oils, what the properties are. Like when you're baking a cake, you typically would use um, eggs as your binding agent. Or when you're baking bread, you use yeast as a leavening agent. So each ingredient has its purpose. So the ingredients for joy has its purpose. And one of them being peppermint. I'll just do that since a lot of people are most familiar with peppermint. Peppermint brings joy, like we talked about. It brings joy and buoyancy to the heart and soul. Most of our emotions and feelings reside at our heart level. Mm -hmm. uh, it invigorates the body, mind, and spirit, which coincides with having that holistic model of everything being in alignment of mind, body, soul, and emotions. Uh, reminds the individual that life can be happy and there's nothing to fear. It uplifts an individual out of their emotional trials for a short reprieve. When an individual uses peppermint, they feel as though they're gliding through life. It assists in staying on the surface of emotional issues like a water skier on a lake. The power of peppermint can be felt most in times of discouragement or depression. When the individual is disheartened, they could use peppermint to rediscover the joy of being alive. However, a person may use may also use abuse uh, as the properties of peppermint oil. If it is used as a permanent escape to avoid dealing with emotional pain, it can hinder growth and progress. Mm. Peppermint should not be used in this way. It aids individuals who need a short breather at times, a reprieve is necessary before re-entering um, emotional waters. But we are not meant to be wad in the shallow, shallow end forever. It is accepted and embraced. Emotional pain serves as a teacher. Peppermint can assist an individual in regaining the strength needed to face their emotional reality. The negative emotions would be unbearable pain, intense depression, heaviness, pessimistic, uh, positive properties, buoyancy, optimistic, clear, relieved, renewed, strength to face um, emotional pain. So again, those are just the properties and ingredients of what you would expect um, for the joy emotion. April, I was going to make a comment. On, oh, go ahead, Vivian. On, I, I treat a lot of uh, business owners and CEOs and also, of course, people that are in network marketing business. And I noticed that emotions, by the way, whatever emotions that you have a hard time either dealing with or moving through your body, that's what's gonna block you in your business. Because that's what they come to me for, right? Is to release those blocks. So what I notice is the essential oils have a, an organic way of really bringing up what is the issue behind this emotion, right? What is the negative picture that you somehow have attached to the emotions? That's why you can't handle a certain personality or that's why you can't make a decision about something in your business. So know that the essential oils will help you open up and um, process those feelings accordingly. So that's what the emotional aromatherapy does to a lot of the clients that we use them for. Right. Thanks for sharing that, baby. Mm -hmm. So if we don't know how to manage our emotions, that's why at the beginning of the call, I was, you know, really pressing on first, let's make sure we're self-aware that we can self-identify what we are feeling and what our emotions are, and then we can learn how to manage them. So if we don't know how to manage our emotions, Again, energy being in motion, like Vivian said, if it's blocked or just stagnant and stuck, these are just some of the consequences. We're talking about anxiety, stress. I think it was Sandra and Angela um, asking, well, how does that impact our health, our physical well-being, our physical health, uh, mentally, emotionally, etc.? Well, we talk about anxiety. We talk about stress, depression, suicidal thoughts physical ailments, unhealthy behaviors. Some people, when they don't know or have the right tools to manage their emotions, they resort to um, unhealthy behaviors such as addictions uh, or abuse, toxic relationships, and, and so on. And let's think um, globally, not just 
individually with ourselves, but on a global scale, look at the world today, you know, with all the divisions, disruptions, and diseases out there, those are all stemming from emotions that are managed or corrected in a proper, in a proper manner. And just some statistics on people who have experienced trauma, they're 15 times more likely to commit suicide, mm. two and a half more times likely to smoke tobacco, wow. three times more likely to have serious job problems, three times more likely to experience depression, mm. three times more likely to be absent from work, three times more likely to use antidepressant medication, four times more likely to inject drugs, four times more likely to develop a sexually transmitted disease, and four times more likely to become an alcoholic. So the list goes on and on. Um, Angela, was there something more specific that you wanted to ask about weights? Oh, oh sorry, I'm muted. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, well, I am also a, um, sexual abuse survivor. Mm -hmm. I was abused at eight years old by my dad's brother. Mm -hmm. And um, I have dealt with emotional trauma my whole life because I never told anybody mm. until I was about 28. Mm. And I finally, it came out in therapy. And that's when I went on antidepressant drugs. And I've taken them on and off my whole life. But I have found and I get so angry with doctors because I suffer from traumatic events in my life, which I try not to let it define who I am today because I know I'm not that person and I, it wasn't my fault and all that. But you go to the doctor because you're dealing with all this trauma and they put you on antidepressants and then you gain 50 pounds and then you're more depressed than ever. Right. So, so you're going through that spiral. Exactly. And it's like, and I also suffer from an eating disorder because of it. So it's like you go back and forth between, you know, thin, fat, thin, fat, traumatized, depressed, happy. And it's like a huge emotional roller coaster. Mm. And I think right now I'm back where I was 10 years ago, five foot two and 180 pounds, and I'm miserable. Well, you're at the right place. Like, I, was it you that you said you were still new to the essential oils? And yeah, well, I've I'm a DoTerra wellness advocate. I've been one for about two years, but I'm not active. Um, so yes, I am still very new because uh, I'm trying to move over to Vivian's team right now, so I can get the training that I want and need to grow my business. But um, yes, I'm still very new to essential oils. I pretty much have almost every one that doTERRA makes in my drawer over there <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, I just definitely, free. Yeah, definitely do the emotional aromatherapy kit as well as um, some other protocols obviously with weight like the slim and sassy products are, are very good mm -hmm. but we need to make sure it's the emotional part that yes. you are addressing and not just the physical aspect because our cells inside of our bodies actually hold memory so when we hold an experience with those feelings and emotions we get triggered with whatever that that memory is so although emotions are energy in motion meaning it changes you know right now everybody could be calm and sitting and listening to this webinar but if a plane came crashing down like on my roof right now i wouldn't be calm i'd be in a frantic mess um, but maybe an hour later with all that shock, I'd be calm again, but mm -hmm. I would probably still have that experience in my mind of being traumatized of that experience. Like, oh my gosh, should I always sit under this particular part of the house? Because at one point in time, a plane came crashing down. Mm -hmm. So people, I think people misunderstand or they don't know the power of emotions and feelings because we hold on at the cellular level um, to associations with those thoughts and mm -hmm. feelings.
And the other question, um, I think we answered the one from Sandra on how it plays an impact with our health, but the other one that she had was, does it affect our environment, such as our children? Like, do they pick up on our emotions or can you kind of hide behind, um, you know, just putting a smile on your face and saying whatever? Um, energetically, the answer is yes, but obviously with kids, they may not be... Um, in tune to be able to communicate what they're reading or fully comprehend and interpret what they are interpreting or or getting from you um, as their as their feedback. But definitely yes, like I said at the beginning of the call, everything holds energy. And whether you're you're sitting in your car or sitting on the chair or the painting on the wall, you know everything is energy. And of course, life beings such as anything in nature, animals, or even other human beings, whether adults or kids, um, they're going to sense that energetic field um, around you. Here's what um, when we talk about impairment. If you guys can go back on mute. And um, to get impaired, take action. So my offer for you today is um, getting a 60 minute life strategy session, which includes how to expand your emotional energetic boundaries. And this will give you the capacity to be able to control your emotions. Uh, to recognize where you stand today in the mind, body, soul, and emotions assessment so that you know how to get to where you want to go. Um, life is a journey. It's like a GPS. You know, when you type in um, an address in your car when you're trying to reach a destination, you first have to know, okay, where am I going? And secondary, where are you starting from? Where are you before you know which um, path to take? And we're going to go over tools like essential oils that you'll be able to use on a simple uh, practical day with simple strategies for self-checks to help your mind and body and souls get back into alignment immediately. And you can stay on course because nobody mm -hmm. is ever immune to curveballs and life's challenges, but you need to be able to have tools in your toolbox to be able to use at any time. And as a bonus, I will give you guys a, for those local to Orange County, a biocommunication scan using the Zyto hand cradle as pictured here on the right. Um, it basically um, shows within your body, it's a GSR, galvanic skin response, um, indicating what is it within your body that needs to be brought back into range in balance and you'll get a personal PDF report showing which particular oils you can use um, to do that. And I'll also teach you um, how and why it's important to integrate essential oils to your existing lifestyle and or business, whether you are doing something else in addition to doTERRA or if you're not in a business on just how to integrate it into your daily lifestyle for you and your family. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, of course, you get a chance to have an emotional experience uh, mm -hmm. with me um, to feel the joy. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to be with April, you guys. Um, I went to her house. We uh, taught together an essential oil class. It is so peaceful and soothing. It's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> thank you baby <laughs> it's true so i'm offering this to uh vivian's um class here at an offer of 199 dollars and all you have to do is schedule that before the 8th the appointment doesn't have to be before the 8th but just put it on my calendar um, by the 8th and all you have to do is go to www.meetwithapril.com and if you're interested in the products, I put my website on here, mydoterra.com forward slash breakthrough barriers with my ID of 313-6297. Again, if somebody else invited you to this call, make sure you get back with that person because I'm sure they'll be able to best help you with a protocol in what you are dealing with. But I am super excited to have shared this time with you thank you for allowing me to share my personal story and i look forward to working with each and every one of you mm -hmm. 
Does anybody have any questions for April tonight? She's here, so let's um, ask her some questions. Oh, share with us, April, about the downward spiral and upward spiral. So, for example, if a person yeah, is kind of bored, bored with their life, right? So, let's go back to that. Um, yeah, so if you're on boredom, how do you ensure that you don't go down the spiral? Or how can you lift yourself upward, so to speak, in order for you to be, you know, more joyful and productive and happy? So first, the tool that you would pull out, since we're talking about essential oils, would be motivate or okay. cheer, okay. right, to raise your frequency. And then we would try to recognize some trigger points on what is it that's causing you to be in the state of boredom? Mm -hmm. And then on the other end, you know, on the other side, what are some things that bring you joy? If you can go back to the place of being a kid again, mm -hmm. what is it? What is, what is your fun factor? Is it taking a walk on the beach? Is uh, it well, writing is, uh, eating ice cream with uh, different colors? That's really what made me like, oh my God, the ice cream man is here. I'm going to go <laughs> out and eat some ice cream. So that's what brings me up. <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And you have to be at a place of sitting with yourself mm -hmm. and recognizing that and being okay with it. You know, you have to be okay with whatever emotion that you're experiencing now and not neglecting it. Mm -hmm. Because what I've learned through, you know, since I was nine years old of facing my first emotional trauma mm -hmm. of the abuse is that as we push it under the rug or shove it away and neglect the feelings, it's kind of like when you say, stop crying to a kid that's crying mm -hmm. well that's kind of neglecting their feeling of needing to cry and release that emotion mm -hmm. um, because it is a valid feeling right. it is a valid feeling to feel bored or to feel sad or to feel angry mm -hmm. it becomes critical when one you don't recognize it and two you don't let that energy be expressed you don't let that emotion be expressed mm. okay got it so you could be bored and go straight to contentment and then you just go up the scale. Basically, that's kind of right. how you, you do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So it could be like this, like I'm bored right now and then I sit with it and I go, hmm, it's because I'm not busy doing the things I was doing before because I've delegated that. And then I go, well, but I actually like it that I'm not doing the things that I didn't like before. Right? So then I start to go, and I'm hopeful that whatever I'm going to do, it'll be just fine. Right. Uh, more right. optimistic. Yeah, acceptance. Becoming more, that acceptance. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to yeah. replace this now with something that I really love to do. So instead of folding my clothes, right, or what, cleaning my house, I'm just going to do something else <laughs> to replace this boredom. Okay. Right. And then I Absolutely. think what, what gives me this passion and joy and empowerment and freedom. Okay, right. I got it. So it actually goes, oh, thank you. This is very helpful. You're welcome. That's exciting. Awesome. Uh, anybody else have a question? I'm just, I'm just like talking out loud. Like, okay, how do I actually bring myself? Because literally I do this to myself, but mm -hmm. I don't know that I'm doing it this way because this is really the patterns that we go through. Um, and so I know if I'm going downhill or uphill. By the way, I'm right. through the downward spiral. That does not feel good. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. This is the danger zone right here. Yeah. And yeah, you go into that victim thing and I go, oh man, that's how people get all those allergies and problems and diseases. Right. There you go. Yep. Your body, your body is an indicator that something is going on. Okay. Somebody raised hand. Deborah Chip. Go ahead, Deborah. Uh, unmute yourself. Okay. Hello. Hi. <laughs> um, I was just wondering, like, um, how do you know, once you know that you've got things that you have to work on emotionally, um, what, how do you know what protocol work is going to work the best for your situation, whether it be inhalation or absorption or, or taking the, the um, oils in, internally? How, hmm. how do you know what protocol and how often? And 
to get, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, to yeah. help, to help you release that. You know what I mean? Are you asking the protocol on how to use the oils? Like how do you? No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying like, if you're new to oils and mm -hmm. you've got something you're working on, mm -hmm. you know, um, I can't imagine you taking the same thing all the time. Yeah. I, I mean, I would like, probably, you can take too much too, I imagine. Knowing the proper, like if I should put it on my wrist or put it on a different body part or if I need to. I mean, how do you know what, what oil is going to help and how to use that oil to help you with an emotion, emotional? Yeah. So the, the beauty about essential oils is that let mother nature take its course. So if you're making it complicated of, oh my gosh, did I put it on the bottom of my feet or did I inhale it or did I take it internally? Either, either, either form or way, mother nature knows what to do with it. It's kind of like in traditional medicine, when you mm -hmm. take a pill to alleviate your headache, you don't have to tell that pill to go to my brain and head because that's where the tension is. It automatically knows what to do with that. Mm -hmm. So the same with essential oils, when you internalize it or um, diffuse it in an aromatherapy, it already knows what to do with the natural aromatic compounds. So you don't have to you know, fret over like, oh my gosh, did I put it on the big toe or the little toe? <laughs> or did I, did I put one drop too many in my water? Let mother nature take its course. And as you get more experience with the oils and listening to your body and knowing um, what you're really feeling, um, your intuition will guide you. Like literally you will know I, I could use a little more cheer this morning. No, I don't think it's cheer. I think it's passion that my body is calling. And you just have to honor that and, and be okay with it. And you'll see and start to feel uh, the difference. You just got to kind of experiment a little bit and see what works for you then, I take Right, it. what works best for you. I mean, I, I can sit here and come up with a protocol with, you know, in the morning, take two drops of this, and in the afternoon, this, and in the early evening, this, which is fine. It's a good starting point, but as you get to see with your own body and how your body's reacting to that particular oil, um, you'll be more comfortable on integrating some other oils beyond you know beyond that basic protocol um and in Thank addition you. to that this is how i would normally use it and this is a good guideline for everyone that's using the oils so if you want to change your mood and your emotions really quickly diffusing the oil is the best way to do it so it could be what she was, um, April was saying, you can just open the bottle and sniff it, right? Because you're just diffusing the oil, like you're just smelling it because it changes your moods right away, like very, very fast. You could be angry and then suddenly you're just at peace. Um, so emotionally, if you're feeling a certain way and you don't like that feeling or you don't know how to dissipate that feeling or move it through your body, mm -hmm. diffusing is the best way to change the moods okay now if you have a physical problem meaning the doctor diagnosed you with a, an issue right and you know that something is wrong already with your liver your heart your kidney or whatever it is right your skin um, drinking it if it says essential oil supplement on the label is the best way to do it because you have to take it because something is already damaged internally so you need something to help you inside right so Taking it in, taking it in physically would help you um, help those cells recover or rejuvenate, okay? Um, and if you really have a pain, let's say you're really hurting in your arm, your back, your neck, then applying it topically would be the best way to do it. So that's just your guideline. Like, am I feeling a certain way? Or is this pain in my elbow, for example, is an emotional pain? Because sometimes it is, right? You're putting it there and it doesn't really do anything. That means it's not all physical. That pain is not quite physical. Does that make sense? Well, Angela, Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, Angela, go ahead. I was just curious about the book that 
uh, April was referring to. Oh, yeah, share that with them, April. Our nice emotional book. Emotions and Essential Oil. April is holding the, uh, the newer version. The old version is actually green, but it, um, the author is... There's no author on here. It just says Emotional Reference Guide, 4th Edition, updated uh, fall 2015. Um, you got that from Aroma Tools? Yeah, Aroma Tools. Aromatools.com, right? Oh, okay. Cool. Raquel said the wheel is a good tool or the app to have many options to choose from oils you have. Thank you, Raquel. And one thing I, I forgot to mention in the presentation, you know, for those of you that are new to essential oils, mm -hmm. not all oils are created equal. So make sure they have, you know, CPTG written on the bottle. And I can't wait. Um, I think we're just in the waiting of any time now where Johns Hopkins University mm -hmm. um, is coming out with their clinical study, mm -hmm. specifically with doTERRA's oils. Right. Um, I was at the convention a few months ago in Utah where they had their medical board um, sharing some of their phenomenal results. Um, so that should be coming out. Keep an ear to that. But there's already studies, like I have this hair sheet from Vanderbilt University where they did a study on wellness in the workplace, studying the stress mm -hmm. um, in the ER environment. And when they diffuse essential oils, they just diffuse it like this. And they had a decrease in um, stress in the environment. Mm -hmm. the, the less stress we have, the more productive we are. And the less we worry about money and all the other things we worry about. So that's really... The key here is if we just relax and allow things to unfold, everything will go your way, whatever you like. So, so thank you, April, for tonight. Um, and uh, thank you guys for your patience as I was running behind, go, go, go. serving others. <laughs> uh, thank you so much and hope you take advantage of April's life strategy session. Especially if you've had through so much trauma in your life and you just want to know, how did April do this? She's now a speaker, a coach, a mom, an entrepreneur with um, a lot of businesses, right? I don't know how many businesses you have now, April. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've integrated my coaching program, you know, as part of my for-profit. I also have a nonprofit to empower survivors of abuse and, and trafficking are foster kids, foster care, and we're bringing this component into um, survivors using the emotional aromatherapy for their benefits of healing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, amazing. Thank you, thank you, and uh, everybody have a good night. And by the way, on Wednesday, Wednesday night at six thirty, we're going to have our love bomb potion by Crystal Abbey. So everybody's asking me what that is. You just have to come because then you know what that love bomb potion is for you and your loved ones um, that you can use to uh, either entertain yourself and to, <laughs> or to uh, make this world a better place for a more loving uh, environment and loving experiences, okay? Thank you all. Thank you. Take care, bye-bye.